Yeah, I just did that. I just canceled my Adobe Creative Cloud account. Well, I didn't cancel, but I just downgraded big time to just the Photoshop account because for the last month I've been using DaVinci Resolve. <clears throat> Apparently everyone's jumping ship over to it. Uh, I saw a ton of big creators have jumped ship and none of them were a factor in me switching. I actually shot a documentary all year last year with my good friend, Dave Ross. Uh, you can find him at Dave Makes Movies. And we edited the first 50% in Adobe Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom. We edited the first 50% of the video in Adobe Premiere and then ended up switching over to Resolve to color grade our project. And that was just a complete mess, but we managed to get through. I just realized that I needed to switch over because it's just a better program. There are literally two things I'm gonna miss in Adobe Premiere and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But first, let's unbox the speed editor that I have never used before. I actually used Jesse's speed editor. He made a video, geez, like a year and a half ago. He did this switch a year and a half ago, but he switched back to Final Cut. So this is the real switch video because I canceled my account and I know I'm gonna stick with Resolve. It's just a better software for me. Shut up, Josh, let's unbox. So the great thing with all of DaVinci's hardware is that it comes with the full software that as of right now still has lifetime updates free, which is pretty fantastic. And this in Canada retails for around 559, I believe. Um, the only weird thing that uh, DaVinci has done is that the software key does not come in the box. It's a whole separate thing. And when I went to my local camera store, they couldn't find the software key anywhere. So they're shipping it out to me. Um, it's, that's kind of a weird thing. It reminds me of the Panasonic V-Log days when you had to actually buy the V-Log key, which was just pure insanity to me. Let's dive in. There it is. Super simple. It's got the welcome. It's got another USB-C. I'm assuming a fairly high speed one, which is fantastic. You can have, never have enough of those. I thought about actually doing a whole top-down camera setup. I'm glad I didn't because it's literally just the speed editor in a box and that's it. So that's it, that's the unboxing. Now that I've been using the speed editor and DaVinci Resolve, specifically the cut page for a little over a month now, I'm starting to get a little more comfortable, but there were a few things that I've still had to wrap my head around while using both the speed editor and the cut page. So I'm gonna take you through just three really quick tips Nothing too in depth because there's some other great tutorials out there, but uh, let's dive in and hopefully these tips will kind of help you out while you start to learn Resolve yourself. The cut page is a bit of a weird page to get used to as a former Premiere editor, but once I started to get the flow of using the speed editor as well as the cut page, I was able to cut down A-roll so much quicker and I actually had a lot of fun doing it. Now I'm still not a master at this, but I'm getting there. No tutorial that I watched really dove into how to basically move up and down video tracks as needed. It's really easy, it turns out. All you have to use is the camera number pad down below here. And if you're on video track one, that means you just press camera one. If you wanna to go to video track two, well, it'll take you to video track two. You press camera three, look at that. We're on video track three. And if you have more tracks above that, obviously, you can add them up to about nine tracks, but that's it. You just have to use the camera one through nine buttons and that'll get you moving up and down your video track so you can add as much B-roll, A-roll as you want. The second tip that I've got for you today is while using the cut page, just make sure that you're watching uh, the main timeline where your playhead never moves from the center point as well as the overview timeline that's up above because the main, the overview timeline will give you a lot more information than what you can get in your main timeline, while the main timeline will give you a lot more detail. So it's just that macro micro scale of looking at things. And it's really important to look at both while let's say you're moving clips or getting precise within your edits. It's just good to know where in the timeline that specific clip is gonna be sitting. This is gonna be important in the next tip that I have for you. Took some time getting used to the different tools that can move your clips along the timeline and how those different tools will actually affect the clips within your timeline. More specifically, 
the move and slide tools. The move tool is fairly easy to use and fairly easy to understand. Basically, it will move your activated clip either before the prior clip on the timeline or after the clip that had originally come after it on the timeline. So I'm just gonna make sure that I am selected on the correct clip, which is my title right here. And you can see the chevron is kind of dancing there, showing you that that's the clip you're gonna be affecting. And I'm gonna double tap. And you can see now that the move icon has appeared on the timeline. So if you just shift it, it will move it either before or after that previous clip. And if you keep going, it will move it further down the timeline. So really easy to use and pretty easy to understand. Again, it's important to watch that overview timeline because it'll show you exactly where in your edit that clip will now appear. So now you can see I've got it way down near the beginning of the timeline. I'm just gonna scrub that back while still holding onto that move button all the way to the end right there and let go. So that's how the move button works. Now let's say you wanna finesse where exactly on the timeline your clip is gonna end up. That's where the slide button comes in. So the slide works a little bit differently because if it's on the same track as other footage that you've already cut into place and you're happy with where those clips are, it will overwrite those clips if you overlap it with those clips. So it doesn't work like the move tool where it automatically pushes it before or after a clip, it will overwrite those things there. So. This is where your camera number pad comes in handy because you're gonna to wanna to move it to an empty track above where you can freely move it back and forth and really finesse where that clip on the timeline is gonna end up. So we're gonna to go to the roll and slide. And we're just gonna slide it back out of the way. And now let's say we want that title back down into the, its proper place. We're gonna go back down to video track one. We're gonna go back to the title track here and we're going to move it back into position. Now let's move back into position and that's how your slide and move buttons work. You just have to make sure with that slide button that it's on an empty track or you have enough real estate on either end so you're not going to overwrite clips that you've already edited into position. Hope that helps. Hey welcome from my living room. Uh, this was the set that I could build in the time that I had tonight because to be honest, I'm pretty fried. It's Easter weekend and I spent all weekend outside since we finally got some nice weather up here in Toronto area. And I've been riding my bike all weekend long. And I think within the span of about 72 hours, I put in about 150 kilometers on the bike. My quads are fried. I probably have a bit of a burnt face. Now, there was a couple things I mentioned earlier in the video that I'd miss with Adobe Premiere and Adobe Creative Cloud in general, but within Premiere, there are some AI tools that are really helpful, like the AI-based remix tool. So you can shorten or lengthen any song that you want for almost any period of time that you want. And then there's also the AI tool for closed captioning and subtitling, which I don't use all that often, but when a client does ask for it, it's really nice that you can just kind of whip it up like that. A few little tweaks you have to make, the AI is not perfect. We slur our words and it can't pick that up, but the speed editor has been super fun. Uh, I just love learning a new software that's still close enough to Premiere and I can't wait to keep going with it. So if you've also made the switch, let me know how it's going for you in the comments below. Um, and if you say, heck no, I'm not gonna do that, I wanna hear why as well. I know a lot of people work with clients that work in uh, Creative Cloud. I'm actually one of them, but I don't do enough editing to make it worth my while for $80 a month Canadian. So that's it for now, and we'll see you in the next one, which might be sooner, might not be. I'm just gonna go to bed. I'm probably gonna use my Theragun and go to bed. I'm gassed. We'll see you in the next one. Beep.